So we are now approaching the crux of the matter in terms of developing a dialogical mode of education, right? And the basic ingredient of that is to access the world in which the people live, right? What is their objective reality? How do they think about it? And if they think about it, there must be a structure to that thought, right? Because the structure makes language possible. And that is what he's calling their thematic universe, right? What are the larger thematics of structure within which they think of their life? There is also a reference to generative objectivity, generative thought. So do keep in mind, I am thinking that generative here means the same as Eric Erickson had theorized, that we all have certain natural impulses to think the world, to act in it, right? And so the idea is the dialogical education will not be a top-down education, but in developing the program that of that education, we will actually go and sit with the people and talk to the people and see what are their generative impulses. You know, of course, their generative impulses are to be freer, you know, to have better lives for themselves and for their own children, to understand the world in which they live, right, against the objective reality in which they live. That must inform the project of education, and that will only happen if the educator actually talks to the people and tries to understand the larger structure within which an individual or a group makes an utterance. Now, the same program will then also apply to politics, reflection and practice meant to develop a praxis of education and of politics. So what's coming across here is the idea of the thematics, right, and the generative context within which that themat thematic and that structure develops, which he is going to explain in the next stage. But for right now, to conclude, we have now reached in our discussion of the dialogical education, which he calls different things, dialogical mode of education or problem-posing education. And one thing is clear that he is also seeing it as a political project. But in both the cases, what it absolutely relies on is not a top-down understanding of the people or the peasants or the workers, but which tries to learn from the people through their lived experience how they verbalize it, what kind of language they use to describe their word, right? With the ultimate purpose of developing a content of that educational system that is liberating and doesn't reinstall the old hierarchies of oppressor and oppressed, both in education as well as in politics.